the daily trap, we are going to be covering this trap and that trap. Not this one though, it blew up. Um, today we're going to be covering the trap that you just saw in the video before, which is a upper and downward um, TNT ore trap. Kind of a, I call it silly ore because it's like ore and the trap is unnecessarily silly. You could just have a lever up there that powers TNT. You don't gotta have TNT fall down, but this way, it's kind of freaking funny, you know? And of course, the most effective way to use this is in a sideways trap, which would be a trap like this. But it blew up because I wasn't able to disarm the bomb, not because it doesn't work. This worked just fine. And I'll show you how to make this too, because this is actually a part of the upper and downward versions. Sorry, this actual general way of building it. You need to you need to build the sideways trap along with the upwards and downwards trap if you want to make one of the upwards and downwards traps, because they take a little bit more work. Um, I'll show you how they work. So right here, we have a candy stripe of diamond ore and TNT. Now. If you're like me, and you just filled the ground with TNT, you want to secure that kill, um, I would not, <laughs> I repeat, I would not build this candy stripe, um, because it's very resource heavy, and this TNT down here is just going to blow up this TNT, and it's just going to boom 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 boom, your entire trap just got destroyed, all that diamond for nothing. You can use iron if you want, but more people are more likely to mine diamonds. Now, and they usually don't think, oh, could this iron be a trap? So if you want a stealthy one, I do iron, but diamonds, people are much more likely. If they have too much iron, they will stop mining the iron, but they never, nobody doesn't mine diamonds. Now, this is very resource heavy, but you could just have stone here. You could just have all stone, as long as it's 13 tall. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13. You want 13, exactly. And then, after that, you want to put an obsidian next to it. You want to have a either line of sand going this way, or just a pillar of sand right next to it. Doesn't matter. And then a piston here. Now, you also want to have two clocks. I'll turn these on. Now, the, I have specific timings here that work very well. You could change the timings to be less or more, depending on what you want, but... I've um, found that if you turn this one any higher, this piston usually destroys the sand while it's coming down because the sand's halfway onto this block and then it pushes back in and destroys it. And if this goes any faster, then it's too fast for this one and the sand just doesn't get pushed in. Now, of course, don't build it up to the surface. People will just dig this down and go, oh, found your trap. So, you know, hide it, you know, boop, boop, boop hidden. Now, how this trap works is pistons cannot push 13 blocks, only 12. So, when this is here, even though the clock is constantly spamming this piston, can't push it down. Likewise, pistons can't push obsidian. This piston, trying to push the obsidian, clock doesn't do anything. And the tick amounts, by the way, four ticks here. I put two on this one, two on that one. Six days here, I put two on this one, four on that one. I'm not sure if that matters, but if your thing isn't working, make sure you have those exact. And how it works is you break the diamond, this TNT gets shoved down here. Why? Because now there's only 12. This can push it. It pushes it down, retracts, because it's a clock on off, on off. Then this one, which is timed, based on this timing, it should be pretty much inverse. When that's up, it, this will push the sand into that place making it 13 again. Then this goes back, another sand falls down, it takes about three ticks for that to happen. This is four ticks, so it won't break the sand. The new sand is there, and then um, this can't push because again, obsidian. So now you have 13 here, we have 12 here, or sorry, we have two here, but an obsidian. Everything's back to normal, but there's a TNT here. When the TNT gets there, it gets lit by this repeater. Make sure whenever you build a trap like this, you have a area to stick your repeater or your torch. And then um, that falls down. Now there's 12 again. And if you're using the candy stripe like me, maybe um, if you're just going for the kill, not the destruction, and you have like a pool of water so they can't escape, and you know, 
the TNT blows them up in the water, so, you know, the TNT doesn't cause damage, but it also still kills them, if you want something like that. Um, then you do the candy stripe, because then it's resettable. What happens is, this diamond now gets pushed back, because it's here now, gets pushed in, sand pushes here, sand comes down, and now it's, it's right back in the initial state, except that these two blocks are sand. That's the only difference, and it's not a very big difference. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's how you build a vertical one. A horizontal one, which I'll show later, is um pretty similar. It's just this, but sideways. Of course, then you don't even need this second one, because you can just have a... If this was sideways, you could just have the sand filing onto that block right there. Because the sand would be going that way, you know? And it'd be falling this way. You wouldn't even need this obsidian or this, you'd only need one clock. Yeah. And um, the reason I have all this TNT down here is so... Because, you know, TNT is very easy to avoid. So if they try to run, they still get blown up. Regrettably, though, that does destroy the entire cave. So it's not resettable if you do that. This is the horizontal trap, as you see. One clock, one piston. There'd be a line of sand going up here, falling onto this, and then it pushes forward. 13th block, right here, mine it, TNT. You know? Same thing. This is the upward trap. Very similar design, you know, you got your repeater, which powers the TNT. It's pushing up this time, and then I have a line. This is not 13 long, it doesn't have to be 13, it can be any length you want. I don't want it to be far away from that cave, so I could build a taller gravel stack back there. And then, of course, you got your four tick clock and your six tick clock and exact same thing but with iron cool thing about this one the tnt gets pushed to here lights and then it pushes the tnt up onto the actual ground and um what the hey let's show that off i'm pretty sure i covered everything um yeah now what you might want to do is you might want to put a couple of blocks here just so that if they dig in the wrong spot you know they don't go oh Okay, I'm, I'm not leaving. Or you know they just like, disarmed. Pfft, oopsies. Good thing the clocks are not off. Now one bug with this that I've noticed, and it only happens with this clock for some reason. Maybe it's the facing. But um, sometimes the clock bugs out. I don't know. It's only with this clock. Like this clock. Oh, no, this clock worked out too. Okay. So that's the one issue on server resets, the clock can bug out. It's just kind of an issue with Minecraft Redstone. It shouldn't be happening, but it does because Minecraft Redstone's buggy. So you want to be careful about that. I think I remember Sethling saying once that as long as it's in like the chunk that you started the game in, the spawn chunk, it doesn't matter, something like that. I don't know, but maybe do that if it's not working out for you. But I'm quite certain that uh, the, the clocks would work most of the time. These clocks I've noticed work better, but could just be luck. Sometimes they stay on, sometimes they don't. Maybe it's because I'm moving away too far away from them and they're bugging out. I don't know. That's the big issue with this. The clocks can bug out. You can maybe build better clocks, but I don't have the time. But um, other than the clocks, it works pretty dang fine. In fact, it works pretty much perfectly fine. Um, and I'll show you. Kaboom! And of course, this one isn't pushing down anymore because this TNT is at the bottom. This repeater got blown up. Let's just replace that. Oh. And then this pushes down back into the initial state, just like you'd want. I like the candy strip design just because you can do this, you can just rapid fire it. Kind of fun. Uh, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Daily Trap. This one, I don't know, Silly Ore, that's what I'll call it. Silly ore. If you want to 
freak your friends out while they're mining, just put this all, all over the place. Put it on like 10 different ore, mine, ore veins. Make them afraid to mine ore because they might destroy the entire cave. Um, of course this is like something to put in creative mode because, whoopsies. Good thing there's no potions in there. That's a previous one. Um, you wouldn't have that much TNT in survival. Of course, if you just wanted to trick your friends, have a little laugh. Um, you wouldn't put that much TNT. You just have one TNT and then a bunch of stone or dirt or something you don't need in there. It's pretty cheap on resources. Um, two pistons, some redstone, and one piece of TNT and one piece of ore, iron or diamond. Not too expensive, in my opinion. That's just to trick your friends. You can have like 50 TNT and just have a blast, but that's of course gonna cost a lot of resources. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this little silly ore thing. Maybe you're gonna use them to trick your friends. I don't know. My name's been Opus Dio. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe learned something from it. And thanks for watching.